What's up guys, welcome back to Beaver Castles. Today we're going to be starting off with Amanita, Amanita, something like that. Um, castle level is a 29. Looks like it's validated on a knight. Um, so let's jump into this castle and see what he's got. I've been leveling my mage quite a bit, and been playing my mage in general just quite a bit. Um, so I haven't really played a whole lot with the new archer. Only a handful of castles. I should probably be saving roll for the most part. I shouldn't really even use it to get around, I don't think. I don't know. We'll see. Alright. I feel like I probably should volley that, but it doesn't look like it's super dangerous. Let's see. Okay, so there's a bunch of derps. If I had split shot here, that's exactly where I would use it, but I don't. It looks like the Defendatron doesn't actually follow with your derps, though, which is a problem because, you know, it's easy to one-shot volley derps. So you'll probably want to take a look at that. Maybe your, uh, your points are a little off. There's too much aggroing, so he's running away. Uh, I think that is an old bad dog, though, so that's good. They have that extra speed bonus and stuff. Um, I will take this. I'm not sure why stuff is aggroed across this wall. Maybe that might be where your aggro is messing up. I don't know if that's intended. But if it is, like, they'll never join the fight because of these mouse wheel traps. Alright. They're too scared to go past this area. It looks like this was not intended to be aggroed, though. From what I can tell. You should probably offset these mouse wheels as well, because it's pretty easy for me to stand in here and get a volley off to aggro everything. And since there's Giltmen, I kind of have to put, pull them back. Or else I'm going to risk dying. Using old dampeners is fine. There's no point in using new ones. Alright, I'll try to get another volley off right here. And I killed enough where I can go past it now. So yeah, that aggro definitely hurts you quite a bit in that area. Um, that Defendatron not being able to shield derps. I mean, derps in general, it's hard to make use of them, but when they do hit you, um, they can deal a killing blow pretty quickly. Like, if they get their headbutts off, I think it's 400 to 500 damage. I think it's really high. So for one point, it's really good. It's just hard to actually get their hits off. Which is kind of why you use, you know, Bad Dog to speed them up and Defendatrons to keep them alive and just hope that they hit once. Yeah, you still have a, a few old units as well, like a level 26 Zeke when you're at level 29 um, isn't very good and stuff like that. Like, a lot of that stuff, once you start getting more materials to craft things up, it, uh, your castle will get a lot better overall. So yeah, just keep working on materials. That's the main thing that you need to be doing to improve the castle design. Um, we'll jump into number two in just a second. Alright, next up we have the three sea three seashells. Um, castle level's a 30. This castle's usually pretty difficult. Uh, he's got 1,200 crowns. It's a pretty, pretty high amount. Uh, validated on this archer, which has really good gear. I really want a level 30 Bogart's fancy hat. Mine's only level 22. The 21% uh, crit chance is just crazy. And then it's got block chance. And those are the two really good stats on that item. But I mean the magic armor helps as well. High resistances, high health. Um, decent DPS. Definitely enough to kill people. Yeah, it's pretty good gear. I'm just taking a look at it really quick. Alright, let's jump into the castle. Definitely better gear than I have. So let's see if I'll be able to get through this without dying. Let's get him, Mr. Pointy. Okay. Alright, so I'll check over here first to see if there's a mine. Alright, there's a lot here. Um, I could probably get to see inside of the wall. There's no creatures inside of there, so I just have to worry about trying to take the least amount of damage possible. Which, that's not it. Actually, it wasn't that bad. Alright, cool. Um, it looks like there's a creature right up there. But I think I want to fight it in the next room. 
Never mind, they're devilin'. This could be dangerous. Alright, so for some reason, um... Hold on, let me not die. But for some reason, the, uh, the, the Enzotron... The Robo Shieldatron didn't actually go off. Probably because there's too many points in this room. Which, that would help you out a lot, right? I was able to just one-shot volley those things, and you could see how they didn't really deal much, uh... I don't know if that guy died, so I'm just dropping a volley there anyway. Um, but yeah, that would have helped you just because I was able to one-shot volley the Devlin, and they actually didn't get any damage off whatsoever. And then once the Devlin are gone, the, the Robo Shieldatron isn't really going to do much by himself. Alright, drop a volley inside of there. That should kill off almost everything. I probably should leave a couple of them up just in case I need mana. If, like, for some reason I need to kite back. Um, that's like, uh, th I've seen this type of setup as well. You can't really get through this. You can't forward kite with this room here. Which is really good. Like, even with a volley, if you, like, the, the way that I did it is the easiest way to take it out. You have to get through, like, three or four barricades and then drop a volley in the middle of them. And then they will all die. But, uh, during that time, you have to take as much damage as, like, this room is gonna dish out. Um, so there's not really any forward kiting there. I like this setup as, like, if you're going to go for a sustained damage castle, I like it as, like, the second group setup. So you have one before it and then this one. And then, like, when people are forward kiting, they're going to have that group behind them and this group. And the whole point is to to get to the next room before these guys actually start aggroing. And if they start aggroing, uh, if you have a really dangerous group like Devlin's, then they'll be able to, um... They'll be able to get their, their damage off and probably kill the person before they make it through, which is really good. It's probably something that I should look into using at some point. It's probably, I think, it's probably the most barricades that you can get overall. In, like, a small section like that. I haven't seen anything else that's higher. I took way too much damage there. Alright, so we have some Caustic Puddles. Um, I'm really still trying to farm up more of these. I have two. I still only have two. I don't know if I had two the last time I did a video, but I have two and I'm almost at a third. Um, I want to get four, but... Alright, I made it through without taking any damage. See, the problem is even if you block the uh, the initial damage, and same with mages, if they use their uh, ability to get across these, but they still get ticked by it, that was dumb of me, um, they'll take that like 400 damage DPS type thing. Alright, this is gonna hurt. Oh my god, there's so much trap damage. Alright, that killed me. That's a ton of damage right there. Like, a ton of hot wheelers and uh, and the caustic puddles. It's really tough. I'm gonna heal myself back up. Just try to kill off as many devil as possible. I can't believe that missed. Alright. I'll use one more potion. Alright, looks like we have a Stabbington here. My Stabbington seems to bug out like half of the time, which is annoying. But. Let's see if I can just like headshot this guy and then follow it up with a volley. Kill off the Devlin. Alright. That was alright. Um, I like the Stabbington here because it's easy for him to push you back into the Hot Roller. And Hot Rollers, like, by themselves, they're a little high for their point cost if you can get through them without actually taking damage. There's a devil that can kill me. I kill that off. Alright. Um, five points is a little high, even though it's worth it, for the most part. It's it's a lot of points for a trap. Um, if it doesn't deal its damage, it can easily make your castle feel a little bit empty. And that's kind of why this castle only really has, like, two rooms. It has two rooms plus the boss room, which is pretty good. Um... But it's because of this area right here, because this is really high amount of trap points right in here. Um, with the caustic puddles and stuff, like, it's really hard to kite this boss room as well, which is which I like also. I wish I had more hot, hot rollers, and I hope that I can get, you know, four or five um, caustic puddles. Because I think they might be the best trap that we've gotten thus far. The damage for the point cost is extremely good on uh, caustic puddles. Like, there's almost no reason not to use them, unless you need an area with a Ballista Trap or a Rotating Flame Trap, because their area of effect is slightly larger, and it's, like, constant, more constant than Spike Traps, but it's still really good. Yeah, I like your castle, though. It's good. Um, let's jump into number three in just a second. Alright, so lastly, we have Pudis Bird. Castle level is a 21. Um, I'm actually going to run this on my mage since it's level 23. It's pretty much the same. His mage is 23 that validated it as well. 
So I'll just run it on this. Um, I'll probably do this as I'm leveling up, but I am going to try to get my mage to level 30 in a couple of weeks here. Um, I've been playing through him just to get the 3 stars, because it's a lot easier to get 3 stars at level 23 than it is to get them at level 30. It's not impossible, but you'll you'll risk dying and losing more crowns at the higher levels. At the lower levels, it's pretty easy. Um, but I'm going to take a look at this one. I usually go for lower crown castles just because they're weaker as well, just to get the 3 stars and the, uh, the added... Um, roulette spin type thing. I've gotten the Flamio, Flamio theme as of right now, and I got a Devlin. So you can get um, premium content because the Flamio theme I don't think is available right now. Oh my god. <laughs> you know, it's funny, he didn't want me to die to that specific setup, so he actually told me that there was a group of, uh, of goat men at the start and I still took half, half of my life's damage from it. I was not thinking about it at all, I was just talking. Um, that that setup doesn't normally kill me though, um, and it probably could have if I kept going a little bit a little bit farther if my reaction time wasn't quite as good. Uh, I like this. This is fine. Um, this is something that we used to use a lot pre open creation. I'm actually getting that health globe because I want it. Um, where you would use uh, creatures like this and like hunger bots and scorpios and stuff like that to increase the amount of trap damage that you would get. Basically, things back then things worked together a lot better than they do now. If you don't rotate properly, that can work. If not, it's going to be really easy to initiate on that. Uh, probably the same way with the Cyclops. If you're not thinking about how that Cyclops could push you back onto the split traps, you can take a little bit of extra damage. In lower castles, and for people who aren't level 30 yet, it's actually more beneficial to just use potions. Like, I should probably use one here. Just because the castles aren't as long as at level 30. So if you overuse potions, and I'm just taking so much damage that I shouldn't be. Yeah, alright, I'll use a potion here. This is pretty good. Uh, I messed up and my, uh, my death bolt actually went on the shielded minion instead. Alright, so I just need to worry about dodging this stuff. My, uh, my skeletons tank for me as well there. I'm not gonna go over here yet, I'm gonna try to... I won't be able to get three stars because I'm talking about the castle, so it'll take me longer than I want it to. That's like, this is actually really cool. This is a mix of, uh, of stationary units, like the the barricades, and and real units, which is really cool. I actually couldn't tell which ones were real for a second. It took me a little bit of actually looking at these to figure it out. That's really neat. Alright, I'm gonna go over here and check it then, since it looks like the castle continues this way. I just want to see what's over here, if anything. And also up here, is there anything? Okay, so your, your defense is a little bit split up. No, I'm not the biggest fan of doing that, but I, I've seen other people do it. It's just... If someone wants to just two-star it by, by using, like, the timer and, um, the timer and making it to the treasure room without dying, uh, they'll be able to do that and not really even have to worry about a good majority of your defenses, depending on how much you split it up. I can see splitting it up for, you know, a handful of traps. Like, I've seen people use Cross Hall 6, and they, the real castle goes, like, off a certain direction, maybe halfway down, and then they use three extra spike traps, which is six points, to just continue it and make it look like it might not actually be the real castle, which is... Is, is okay. I mean, it's fine. Right, let's get in here. Oh, this is dangerous. I'm gonna use a potion, actually. So yeah, right here I could get into the boss room, which I will to get some distance on the goat men, because that's kind of scary. And if I was, um, if I was playing uh, without talking and stuff like that, I would probably be able to just get into the boss room and not have to worry about getting um, the mines, and I could just two-star it pretty easily. Which a lot of people will do if, if, if I don't have a ton of time left right here, like, if I have, you know, 15 seconds, I'm going to just go out because I know I'm not going to be able to go back and find the, the other mine. Or a lot of people just don't like tracking them down and stuff like that. That's why I don't like really splitting things up. Because it makes your castle feel very empty, especially at the lower levels, when there's not as many defense points to work with. Alright. So what do we have here? Alright, I should probably do what I just did there, except do that and that. So this is really good. This is why I like the mage so much and why I'm leveling them up. Um, I actually like vamps quite a bit at this level at least. Uh, from what I've been playing is they've, a couple times they've given my mage um, some hard times when I don't have my cooldowns up. But anyway, what I was saying is I like the mage because there is a defenditron here, probably on um, the AoE defend, but because Vortex has a stun attached to it, 
if you initiate with Vortex on a Defendatron or a Rebel Shieldatron that has that AoE, it won't get it off until after you deal your damage. So you do a Vortex plus a Fireball on top of all the units, and a lot of the times the little things that you're trying to defend automatically just die because of it. And that's why I think the Mage is so strong right now, is that combo is really effective if you can initiate on something. So you have to be super careful when you're setting up your defense. Alright, which way was the castle again? I'm kind of lost at this point. I think it's up here, though. No, it's not. No, it's not. It is this way, I think. It looks like the boss room on the mini-map, that's why I'm thinking that. So yeah, the, this castle would be even better if I was a little bit less experienced and didn't look for things um, that are coming like around corners. Because if you rotate properly, and you can initiate on things like I did there, or look for certain setups that you kind of feel are coming, um, a lot of those setups can kill you with goat men and stuff like that. Like that last setup that I went past, if I hadn't kited, kited across that uh, that springboard trap and stood on there, did a vortex like that, um, then what was I gonna say? Um, I lost my train of thought. Um, if I hadn't done that and I just uh, used my escape ability over there, the goat men that were there could have easily killed me right there. It's just. Um, I looked for it and was able to kill it before it came up. So, pretty good castle. Um, this is number three, so we're going to end the video here. As always, if you guys enjoy what I do, please subscribe. If you want to be a part of your castles, you can email me at frenzycastlerunsathotmail.com. Um, that's in the description, as well as a spreadsheet that I kind of keep updating uh, for the names that I have to run. Currently, it was updated today, um, which would have been yesterday. Just look for the date at the top of the, the, top of the thing, although for time zones it might be a little bit different. But uh, yeah, I have three castles left, so I have one full video that I can record sometime this week. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to do a defense video this week. I kind of want to wait to see what comes at Thursday, because if it's going to be totems this Thursday, then I'll probably wait for that. Um, so I might wait until after Thursday and then record a defense video on Friday if totems don't come. If they do come, I'll probably do a little bit of experimenting, and we'll have videos that might come out about that. I don't really know. Uh, for the next couple of days, I'm not sure exactly what's going to come out. Um, but we'll, we'll try to figure out something. I might even do a different game. I've been thinking about um, going back and trying Incognita because that came out with a lot of updates. I haven't played that in months. and uh, Well, I actually have been playing it recently, but I haven't recorded a video for it in months. And it's changed quite a bit, so I might want to um, revisit that game and maybe try to do a playthrough of it. Uh, it's pretty difficult right now. But with that said, um, we're going to end this video. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you next time.